Good morning, pregame crew. Getting started just a little bit early. We have GDP numbers in eight minutes, jobless claims, uh, weekly jobless claims in eight minutes. It is Thursday, August 26, 8 22 a.m. Eastern. I'm Char Gal Lori. We will get started in eight minutes. Audio visual check, please. Good morning, David, Curtis, Jorge, Sean, Judd, Tammy. How are y'all doing? If you're watching this later in the day, you can fast forward approximately seven minutes and I will officially get started. Hey, Chuck. Thank you. Hey, Night Chuck. Thanks, Judd. What a day yesterday with that RTY move and pullback. Unbelievable day. I am trading a little bit of crypto right now. I am long ADA, FTT, and LINK if you are interested. What is going on with Bitcoin? We haven't checked in on that in a couple hours. Bitcoin is bouncing as well, so helping the bounce on my little altcoins. I am short oil. Those are my four active trades. I have three long crypto trades on and I am short oil. I posted that I took this short. I actually talked to you about it yesterday. Let me get out of there. That's not my normal chart setup. Don't want to confuse you. I had my Keltner channels turned on. So on CL, th this trade is the my favorite trade when you're running super, super hard into oil inventory, excuse me, pit close. And at pit close yesterday, we saw that peak here. Pit close was about 15 minutes before that. Then we saw the sharp reversal. So I'm still in this short, looking for daily consolidation on oil. Inventory's out of the way, so I feel a little more comfortable being in this trade. A little five minute reversal candle there with a lower wick. I'll be watching it, $68. I wouldn't wanna see it above that. I would probably take my short, short excuse me, off around $68. I may give it nine cents of wiggle room depending on volume. Volume helps me adjust my plan just slightly, but I always have an exit plan. You probably are gonna notice something new on my chart today. I use the Squeeze Pro, but it's something that I have not used in the pregame show because I, it's a little flashy and I don't want my charts to be too busy, but I have switched to the Squeeze, Squeeze Pro indicator and it is made by Makito, M-A-K-I-T-O. When do I sleep? <laughs> uh, I'm doing great, Curtis. Thanks for asking. Good morning to all of you. I woke up at 2.40 last night. I went to bed at 9 p.m., so that is not ideal. I am on mountain time now, actually. I was Pacific uh, in the last year. We have transitioned to Idaho, and so now I'm on mountain time zone. So down here, you see my time zone, 626. So I've been awake for almost four hours, which means extra coffee which means extra energy, apologizing now. Or maybe I'm not apologizing. This is my Twitter profile if you're interested in following me, Chart Gal Lori. Four minutes until economic data, four minutes. Hey Jorge, Bobo, Skyway, Ray Miller, I do take naps. So typically when the market closes, and I say typically today I have a hair appointment so it won't be my typical day, but typically I take a 45 minute nap after the market closes and after any crazy earnings plays. I do value my sleep. I do take sleep supplements. I am pretty serious about my sleep schedule. But this morning my brain had other thoughts and got me up. I don't mean to wake up so early. It's what happens when you get over 40. <clears throat> Your sleep schedule gets messed up a little bit. Hey, P-Court. Good to see you, man. 
three minutes. Looking at ES, NASDAQ, YM, and RTY, I would say YM has my favorite setup. The ascending scallop is, I call it the trampoline move. I like when we get that curvature to the EMAs and that's what the YM has on the four hour. So I really like that setup. And RTY, we ran right into this daily actually, daily resistance here, 22.52.70. And we hit 2251, we came within a dollar of it. How nice was RTY to us? It held this support by $8 and it rejected yesterday by $1.70. I would say it trades pretty cleanly. That's, that's really helpful in a trading vehicle when you have something that is uh, very sensitive to support and resistance and responds well. So I really liked how it responded and I don't like this hourly chart. So as it approaches 2251 again, I would look to get back in a future short. I, I have IWM puts from yesterday. Roger, what's the same here? When you're over 40, your sleep schedule gets messed up. Hey, Don, how are you? Hey, train man Dan, that's very nice to say. Any Kid Craddock fans out there? I know Kid Craddock passed away a long time ago, but did y'all ever watch or his current syndicated radio sh show? I still think it's in his name with Kelly Raspberry, Big Al, JC. I used to watch it when I lived in Louisiana and Phoenix. I would listen to it online. And anytime someone would say, we love your show, they would say right back to you, we love your show. So train me and Dan, I love your show. How about that? <laughs> okay, Roger, then you feel me. You totally feel me. Yeah, Tammy, it, it just gets tougher as you get older with sleep schedules. Thank you, Curtis. You're right, you're right. My husband really looks after me and makes sure that I do take care of myself, so. I do have support to make sure I don't overextend myself. Hey, Tony. All right. We got data coming out. Where are we? If you're interested in my chart setup, it's on the screen right now. Screenshot it. Now I'm going to delete it and let's see what's going on with this data. Are we going to, it looks like a nothing burger. It's happening with gold. Typically, yeah, gold spiking. Typically, if you don't get a market response, gold can sometimes be very sensitive to this economic data. And there it goes. Support at 1789. On the four hour, odds favor a lower high at 1794. Let's see what the bulls got. Your next resistance is up at 1799. So if we'd charge straight to that 1799, I'd be looking for a counter trend flip on golds. Typically you get these burst and then you can quickly take the reversal trade and do uh, take it to the downside and opposite if it's going down hard you can typically take the reversal trade and go long. So nothing really with the markets. That's good. We want things to just kind of stay calm. So today is a cautionary day. Y'all hear me use these words often. By the way I got a new ergonomic mouse so if, again I look kind of clunky. I'm getting used to it. Cautionary day, risk off, Fed speak. So typically when we have really strong uh, or very important economic data coming out and or Fed speaking, they're in Jackson Hole right now, it's what they call a risk off day. And just imagine throwing your both hands up and backing away from the market. And that happens on caution days. You need to be really careful about adding a lot of risk on on cautionary days where there are variables outside of your control that could impact the market. So please be aware of that. Hourly is giving me, I, well, I shouldn't say clarity because we got this little trend change, but I don't buy it yet. On ES, NASDAQ, I do buy it on YM. It's a little bit more noticeable and RTY. So remember overnight trading volume is down. So volume is lower. So you can get these little tiny bull breaks that don't mean a whole lot just for the real bears to wake up the next morning and kill it. So that's what I'm seeing on all fours, hourly trend changes. So the real clarity is coming in the four hour. 
we need to break four hour higher highs in order for the bulls to take back control. And I'm probably not even saying that correct because obviously bulls are in control. We went sideways overnight. Sideways is always a win for the bulls. But right now I am looking bearish on most of the Fab Four futures for the day with the line in the sand at 4,500 on ES. It's just so clear. And RTY, I'm looking to short again futures on a bounce, I would say I'm trying to get an estimate. I'm going to have to do a fib. I was telling myself 2242. So 2239 is a 50% retrace. That could be an area for a potential short on RTY, but I need price to pause. So let's go back up to ES. So on the four hour, what I'm looking for is a lower high compared to 44.98 and that clear psychological resistance lying in the sand, especially with all the overhead news that could be coming in today with the feds. We have support on shorter term time frames down at 4485, 4484, 4480, resistance 4493, 4494. Hey Simon, I do not uh, do mentoring at the moment. But I have been asked so many times in the last month that I plan to open up maybe one Saturday, maybe four hours, and where I will do four mentoring sessions or something like that. So if you're a member of TCG, I'll be posting any openings I have uh, in the beginner section of the Chart Guys community. And I'm Chart Gal Lori. I am part of that Chart Guys community, and we teach technical analysis. So every morning with the pregame show, I go over the Fab Four futures, commodities, crypto, and movers and shakers of the day. We do this show. It's free. I get up really early and prepare for it. And our goal is to build our community, to add quality members to our community that can contribute, trade setups, that we can help teach and guide along the path. Pretty interesting this morning. I have been pretty heavily involved back in Twitter and the Twitterverse the last few months. And it's so interesting how so many people... Uh, are very critical of other technical analysis styles. Remember, we all have a system. And if your system is the strat, God bless you. I'm sure it's working wonderful for you. You know why? Because you have a system. If your system is you only trade on full moon bullish, then that may work for you. At least you have a system. I respect anyone who has a system that is helping them be a consistently profitable trader. So I just to let you know, whatever your system may be, just know that you have respect for me. If it's consistently profitable, then keep going for it. So this platform every morning in the pregame show, I go over these tickers and I approximately do that in about 25 minutes. And then we head on over to the Chart Guys community. And today, Denzi will be live doing pre-market and opening drive coverage for about an hour and a half. We have a, a midday show I will be doing at noon Eastern. And then we have an end of day live show where we go over all your ticker requests. I don't have a lot of time during this show to go over your ticker requests. I do try to save a little bit of time at the end to answer whatever questions I can. Because the absolute number one goal with this show is to help you become a better trader. ES is pulling back a little bit here. There's that GC reversal. If you took that trade, there it is. Do you see how that happens where you get these spikes and then a quick reversal? On any type of geopolitical news, that trade, you're going to see it really often. And it, you have to kind of go into the one minute and you see that upper wick of profit taking. You enter in and then it's kind of like that high of the low bar. You go through the low of the high bar. As soon as it breaks through that low, this high candle here, it breaks through the low, then you short it pretty successful trade strategy. Okay, how do you, okay, you go to the chart guys, uh, Judd or P Court or All Natural, can y'all post the link for the chart guys community and how they can join the link, please? Thank you. So NASDAQ pulling pretty hard back here, 15320, 15317, resistance 15348, and then 15355 on NASDAQ. So let's go back to the hourly. I don't want to get too caught up in this temporary action. We have EMAs overhead in that hourly 50 MA overhead on NASDAQ. Y'all know I, when the hourly 50 MA overhead, I get bearish. So RTY is above it. So I would say NASDAQ is the weakest this morning on the hourly setup and then RTY. Okay, YM. YM again is the strongest. 
35445 resistance support 35288 35229 RTY resistance 223890 and then this 223960 this 50% retrace support 2232 and 2228 so I did post this morning that I was pretty fired up about the pregame show. I've given you the Fab Four futures and I have a bearish lean today. Before I get into commodities, I want to go over with you strategy. I, I think I've shared with you multiple times that I just learned how to play poker. And I will ask my husband, well, I have two kings and then you have this, then what should I do? And literally, I don't know of course any of these strategies look how complicated this is if you have a I don't even know what any of this means uh here we go NR don't raise against a raise whatever this is how complicated poker can be the more advanced that you get constantly lining up odds in your favor trading is no different we are constantly lining up the odds in our favor so this is one way to look at it and I like this diagram a Flow chart. So decision making and algorithms in trading is very similar to this. Is the overall market bullish or bearish? Okay, if it's bullish, then I'm going to go to my bullish charts. Okay, is the four hour, the weekly, the daily, is everything lined up? Okay, yes. Is the bull vault? And it's constantly evolving. And this chart gets bigger and bigger and bigger as you learn to trade. You're going to get more details. I don't know if y'all watched uh, Dan's video yesterday he talked about this little sign he got an xlf that the short idea would probably not work yesterday on the one minute volume back here i don't know if you could see that again i'm with a new mouse i don't know if i can even if i know how to zoom in but this one minute bull volume told him this top fish setup would probably not work and he backed off the top fish and so did i those little details he's constantly adding to his mental algorithm as he's thinly slicing data if you've ever read the uh, book blink blink they start out the book talking about this guy and i'm going to butcher the analogy or the story but basically this guy would go around to these museums and he'd look at these art like a michelangelo or whatever and he would tell you if it's a real piece of art renaissance art or whatever or if it was a fake and they would ask him how did you know it was a fake and he couldn't mental he could not articulate how he knew it was a fake it was so many little details dan's brain has about a hundred times this amount of uh decision trees in his flow sheet his algorithm his looks more like this okay does that mean that you can let me bring this over here does that mean that you can't be a successful trader if your algorithm doesn't look like this no so here's my analogy and of course i'm showing you all my notes so if you are learning to play football and my son played peewee football and he would see somebody open down the field he'd throw it to them and they'd score a touchdown they were still very successful absolutely very successful in football now their algorithm for their offense didn't look like this. Basically, if the, and it, he didn't even have to be open. Is the hand, is the football in my hand? Yes, did the ref blow the whistle to go live? Yes, and he just throws it down the field. He can, you can still make touchdowns like that. Same thing in trading. You can have a very simple algorithm that says, is the ball in my hand? Is the receiver open? Yes, throw it and you can make profit. It can be that simple. And the more you trade, you're going to keep moving up the ranks to junior high football, to SY, whatever. Uh, I don't know what other people call it. To high school, to college football, to being an NFL quarterback. Your decision making gets a little more complicated. As you become a more advanced trader, the decision making looks more like the NFL. Is the safety backing off the receiver to the inside? Throw it to the right upper corner shoulder kill time in the pocket to allow receiver all of these blah 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 all these different details and this algorithm could go on with 40 different questions that you're quickly processing in your brain and then it looks like this and that when you become a more advanced trader your flow sheet your probability card will look like this you can still be successful in the short term but just know when dan is saying little comments like 
oh, that one minute bull volume on XLF, and you're like, what the heck is he talking about? Oh, keep it simple and keep adding to your flow chart as your brain allows, as you can absorb and expand your horizons as a trader. I hope that helps someone. I hope I didn't take my analogy too far, but it made a lot of sense to me. All right, going back, let's look at gold. Oh, gold's really dumping. I hope some of you took that trade. 1784, we broke through this support by $1.10. And then 1778 is your next support. I'd back off that short right now. When you get these little bear breaks by a couple of dollars, that's where you wanna just kind of back off of it on any bounce. Bears could be looking to short the five minute eight EMA. Resistance is the high of that bounce, 1793.80, then 1794.80, then up at 1799. Aw, y'all wanna know a fun fact? All natural already knows. My husband was an NFL quarterback, so that is how I my analogies usually end up back in sports. I have three uh, daughters that played college basketball. I played basketball. I, everything comes back to sports for me. So that is how I always come back to sports. And yes, I did teach fresh out of college. Okay, oil, we got this 30 minute EQ. I'm gonna be cognizant of that. If we can't break 67.34, I will be watching my oil short. I have QM on short. That is a mini. That is a mini contract. They also have micro contracts. I have a couple on so I could take one off right at support and then let the other one ride. Next support after 67.34, 67.15. Resistance, 67.88. 67.89 and then 68.09 Bitcoin. Bitcoin. This looks like a four hour bear flag. We're getting a lower wick of bulls buying the dip. But this isn't impressive yet. Let's get that 15 minute high or low and let's change the trend for real right now. Because this looks like we just had a bear break from a little rising wedge. They bought the dip. I need to make sense. Four hour potential bear flag. Sometimes I go too fast, y'all, and my, my mouth gets ahead of my brain. Resistance, 47.438, 48060. Support, low of this move, 46315. And below 46315, 45406, 45406. Burden of proof is on the bulls here because the bears have had their way with this chart on the four hour, four hour downtrend. And right now that's all that matters in the Bitcoin world and the Ethereum world. I would say I would give a little check mark bonus point to the Ethereum bulls because they didn't break this uh, support by much. $22 and a $3,000 underlying, I would say could be a double bottom. So a little check mark to the Ethereum bulls. Resistance short term, 3132, 3167. Okay. Apple. Apple. I wouldn't say that I have a trade for you right here, right now on Apple. We have this daily squeeze. I've been drooling over this chart for, what has it been, a couple weeks now? We have a daily EQ, EQ forming right here. If we were to touch the daily 21 EMA, that is the red line right there, 147.39. So the 21 EMA is the mean, the mean reversion. So I'm looking for a daily lower high and a touch of that daily 21 EMA in an hourly oversold condition come to mama. We almost hit it yesterday. We didn't quite get oversold. I played this bounce a couple times yesterday. So I would love a daily higher low potential bottom fish at hourly oversold at the 21 EMA with a daily squeeze. And I would like for the RSI to stay above 50 here. That would probably put it right around 50. So a confluence, a lot of those data points, remember my chart's expanding. I've been trading for several years. So my chart is expanding. So I have lots of little data points, what I'm looking for in Apple, but I am not going to short Apple. This chart looks too good on larger term time frames. I am looking to bottom fish it. BLDR. BLDR with a potential weekly cup and handle. This is a very pretty chart. It's probably a little bit clearer on like the two or three day, but even within the 
shorter term time frames, we have cup and handle type psychology, which happens a lot when you have a, a pattern on a larger time frame, BLDR. This chart looks really good, potential swing idea. So this isn't a day trade, I'm just throwing out swing ideas for you. I like this chart, CRM post earnings trade and I like the pro proximity to the all time high and the proximity uh, potential daily bull flag. This is just a beautiful chart. When you have a pretty chart that overall daily weekly larger time frames and you get the cherry on top with pretty with great earnings and upgrades, give it to me. So we have let me do new Resistance 26867, 271, support 26701, 26498. Today may be a complete day of rest and I may not get a day trade out of it, but I will be watching this name for a potential trade to the long side on a larger time frame and possibly a few day hold. Dash. This chart, where is my notes? Daily, four hour, one hour squeeze, potential four hour bull flag. I like how tight this chart is getting. Over 188.76, I'd like to go to the long side. Below 187.26, I don't know that I'd trade this to the short side. I like this for a long idea. So all these long ideas, I need the market to co cooperate or it won't work. I like DXCM2 and Datadog. That's so funny. I was looking at those too. Okay. Daily and one hour squeeze on this chart. Four hours tight. I was trying to see what time frame. So on the hourly, we have resistance at 17852 from regular trading hours, 17863 from after hours, support 17743. How do you trade this? I would like a pullback to this 17750 area for a potential long. I need it to stay over the hourly 50 MA so it may not come back all the way to 17750 for a potential long. I like this. I like this, uh, pff, this thing, beautiful. A potential daily bull flag on Microsoft. We don't have a lot of squeezes. What does that mean? That means we could take a leisurely stroll northward. When we have a little bit of a squeeze, that's when you can see that real momentum push and that tailwind and that strong advance. When you have hardly any squeezes, we do have a squeeze on the daily that fired long, but it may just take a leisurely stroll. And that's fine too. You get there how you get there. But I like Microsoft to the long side support of 342. I would even like it around $300 for a potential long. I'm telling you I'm looking bearish yet. I have a lot of long ideas. So I realize that that's conflicting. Let's see what the market's got up its sleeve. Pinterest had a strong close yesterday, but I'm going to scratch this. I don't like how extended it is. But you could get a five minute back burner trade off pins. It had a really strong move yesterday. So you could set an alert for a five minute over first five minute oversold after a strong move trade. SPRT. This name is a beast. If you are not an experienced trader, I would really caution against this name. I have an errant line. One second. So we have resistance 1476 and 1505 support 1399, 1329. I've been trading this name. I'm out of all my commons. I have just a few calls left. And this name has a 61 or 64% short float. It's posted in Reddit stocks in the TCG room if you want to know what that is. That is a ridiculously high short float. So I like SPR to the long side. It's getting a little extended. But let's see if we can get a squeeze on shop. Daily trend line bull break. Crazy strong recovery yesterday. So we had this daily trend line. When it's this obvious with this many touches, I can't be all negative and pessimist about trend lines. Y'all know that they're not my favorite. But this one had a bull break. We had a daily inside bar with a strong close. Look at that recovery yesterday. It was beautiful. Could be an hourly cup and handle on shop. Five minute back burner trade is an option for a potential trade or on a pullback to the long side. Yes, yes, absolutely. I did both and I regret the calls. Even though I made money, the commons were much better on SPRT. TCAT, TCAT's a crazy cat. I'd actually be looking to the short side on this name. It's had a big run up. We have a nice tightening range. Resistance 1070, 1160, support 1005, then $10 psychological. 
and then 932. So be careful. This is an NFT related name. Crypto gets bouncing hard today. This one could get a nice bounce as well. But with a move this high, this it's very pumpy, like a uh, pump and dump. So I would like this to the short side, but again, only for the experienced trader. I was fangirling over these charts this morning. Unbelievable weekly chart and monthly chart. This is just beautiful. Look at this weekly squeeze. A weekly squeeze typically gets seven to eight bars of follow through. So we just fired long. So that would be seven to eight weeks of follow through. So your potential on this is to get that high of, high of low bar earnings trade or first five minute oversold. And I like this one for a swing. This chart looks great, tons of upgrades. Same thing with WSM. This chart looks beautiful, gorgeous weekly chart, beautiful daily chart. I like this for earnings. We're, uh, we're attacking the all time high right here, right now. I like this for a high of low bar pullback. If it just pops and fades all day, don't blame me. We gotta stay with that high of low bar concept and then we keep our stop underneath that low bar. And if it doesn't work, we get just little paper cuts, that's it. We don't want knife wounds, just paper cuts. Zoom, Zoom had a daily bear flag, but it got a nice upgrade this morning. I think the bulls are coming out to play on this one. They're mad at these bears. So got an upgrade this morning on a pullback. This could be a nice dip by daily chart is still broken. Bears could still pounce on this name, but this one could be an interesting trade. Let me leave it at that. Just this could be an interesting trade for the day. Let's see what the bull volume at open how it opens then i could give you a better clue as to whether it would be a bullish day or a bearish day qqq resistance three set i'm just going to go with uh the regular trading hours 37507 37539 your next support below the pre-market level 37347 37336 spy SPY 44816 and then 44748 are your supports. Your resistance is 44891, 44946. If we go sideways today, it's a check mark for the bulls. If we pull down a half percent, check mark for the bulls. If we pull down more than 1% on higher bear volume, then the bears are stepping up here. There are so many uh, influences outside of our control that want to see this market propped up. Uh, and it's not manipulation. I don't care for those words, but there are a lot of reasons the, the overall government wants the market propped up. And that's when you see all this rotation, the printing presses. And then every time they start talking about interest rate hike, then they start staving off the interest rate hike. So overall, it's hard to get bearish on a monthly chart that looks like that. It's hard to get bearish on a weekly chart that looks like that. So when you wanna get overly bearish, remind yourself of, the, of these larger term time frame charts and just remember, stay with the trend that is, not the one that you're guessing may be, stay with the trend that is. Okay, what do y'all need? Badu. Yesterday y'all were having requests and I couldn't see them because I wasn't in live chat. I was in the top chat or whatever. So I apologize for that. I was kept asking y'all, did y'all have requests and y'all had them listed and I didn't see them. Support 153.20, 152.40, Resistance 153.88, 155.13. Uh, YY had bullish news, Chinese name. So just know that um, it could have bullish correlation for the sector. It could be a 12 hour or four hour bull flag. Absolutely. What we need to see on consolidation is lower bear volume to confirm that potential bull flag. Yes. Well, it's okay. I can trade manipulation. Can you? Technical analysis helps me trade manipulation. It's been manipulated since the beginning of time. That's okay. The charts help us with that. Amazon for Tamazon. 3286.15 is support, resistance 3321. This is the saddest QQQ chart out there. So don't get overly bullish on the daily chart. On the weekly, we're fighting to get above that 50 MA. But on the daily, this is the saddest of the sad. Could it be a bottom fishing opportunity? Sure. 
If we could come down to 3286, you could try along or even 3274, but don't lose sight of that daily chart. Bulls have a lot of work to do with their construction hat. SPLK, Denzi will be live in three minutes. They had earnings, didn't they? They had a lot of upgrades this morning too. Charts and a daily squeeze. Beautiful chart. It was extended coming into earnings. I don't like that, but it could have still have a nice bull move. Support 159.50, 158.80, resistance 160.50, 161. Nice chart, nice reaction, nice upgrade. Snow. Support 290, 506, 290, excuse me, 295, 294, 50, 289, 94, resistance 301 and 302. Snow is a tough, tough chart to trade. It's totally tough. So just remember, I have my daily alert set here to short it up here near 327.41 to look for a short. This thing ran nicely into earnings. It got some nice upgrades. It could definitely have another bullish day. It's just really tough to trade. MRNA, and that's the last one. Then DVAX, and then we're done. Four hour, we are trapped below the 50 MA. Yeah, this is another double top rejection. We broke this level by 50 cents and we rejected. So we're still stuck within this range on MRNA and we could chop here a few more days. Your support low of day yesterday, 387.97. And then DVAX and we're done. I went over CRM, yes, rewind. I went over it, it's beautiful, love it. We are pretty extended on the DVAX chart. We are not in all-time high territory. Your next resistance is $20 psychological. Chart's pretty. Support 1630, 1620. I can't enter it up here, but if you're in long, you're fine. All right. That's it for me. Thank you for joining me. You stop losses. Appreciate y'all so much. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button for me, please.